ask a kid, basically. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is day six of a very special week on Chef AJ Live dedicated to the wonderful graduates of Main Street Vegan Academy. You can find out more about the wonderful academy founded by Victoria Moran, who kicked off the week, just looking at the show notes right below the video. And each week we've had one of the wonderful graduates do a culinary demo. And today we have Naomi Green, who's going to be making a totally slurpable pad thai noodle and zoodle bar for any eater she's been on the show before but she is in a different country now we'll have to figure out why please welcome naomi to the show it's so nice to see you again thank you so much for having me i'm so excited to be on your show again and i'm so excited to be showing you this recipe because what i really want to show you is how you can have people over or serve your family in a way that everybody can enjoy without worrying about whether it's vegan or not or oil or not. You just serve this bar style and I'm going to show it to you and everybody is going to be delighted. That's what I want to show you today, how easy I it can be. cannot wait, but you told me you're in Belize. Where did you move from? When and why? So we moved from Florida. We had been in Florida for, you know, 15 years or more. And we were running vegan retreats all over the U.S. And that got stressful, because not because of the pandemic, of course that happened, but um, you know, to go to a new Airbnb big house every single time and wonder what they have there and drag my Instant Pots all over the U.S. got stressful, right? So we were thinking like, where could we go that is mysterious and magical that people would want to go where we could create retreats that people would want to come to. And then um, I thought, like, how could I make my retreats different from what anybody else is doing? And I said, I know what I specialize in is making cooking easy and delicious. So we are running group cooking vegan retreats and adventures. And so we're cooking the food all day, every day together and having all kinds of adventures in the rainforest and out on the reef and all the things. And so that's why we moved here and that's what we're doing here. So that's what this big kitchen is for so that 10 people can stand around cooking, which is so fun. That sounds amazing. I, 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 I just sound, uh, what, what's the country like? It's a Central American country. So that's what it's like. Um, it is not like America. There is not a Walmart. Um, generally you cannot get lemons. And so I have to cook everything with limes. You get what you get. You don't get upset. That's, that's how it is. Well, it sounds, it sounds like a great adventure that you're having. So tell us about your journey to veganism and to Main Street Vegan Academy specifically, because people are interested in whether or not they should take the course in October. Oh my goodness. That changed my life. Well, Back in 2014, um, I had breast cancer. I had a lump in my breast. And the thing about that, I was 47 years old, which is a young age to have that, although women are getting that diagnosis earlier and earlier nowadays, breast cancer. Um, and when they told me that, I could not believe they were telling me that because I thought I was living a healthy lifestyle. Um, I worked out with my dogs. I got running with my dogs. My kids were in sports. I shopped at Whole Foods. I knew about kale and acai berries. And when they told me that, I was like, no, 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 you got the wrong girl. That cannot be me. So uh, she was like, no, it's you. You have breast cancer. You have to come in. So I had to have my breasts removed. I had to have 10 months of chemotherapy, 37 radiation treatments. And all of that. And when she was, when we were done with all of that, at the last appointment, she said, oh, no evidence of disease. You're cancer free. And then the very next thing she said to me was, but you need to come in every three months and we'll tell you when the cancer comes back. And I was like, what are you talking about? The cancer comes back. And she was like, well, that kind of cancer, it's estrogen fed. It's very common. It could come back. Um, and she held the pills at me. I need you to take these pills. I tried to take the pills. I didn't know any better back then. This was seven years ago. And uh, those pills hurt. Anybody who has a, a family member or a dear friend who has breast cancer, 
they're all taking those pills. What they do is they remove the estrogen from a woman's body. And that's what makes us feel good. So especially if you are before menopause, you need that estrogen. So, um, so I started to think about the food. I started to think about it. And I was like, I'm going to ask my oncologist to tell me what to eat when I go back. So I went back and I told her I didn't want to take these pills. And I said, please, please, I begged you, please tell me what to eat that doesn't cause cancer and I will eat that. And tell me what not to eat that causes cancer and I won't eat that, I begged her. And she looked me straight in the eye and she said, it doesn't matter what you eat, you need to take these pills. And I said, no, I know that they're superfoods. I know that that food makes a difference. Tell me what to eat. And she said, it doesn't matter what you eat. And so I was pissed. So, um, so I went home and I started Google searching, consulting Dr. Google like this, food and cancer, breast cancer, and nutrition. And I came across the documentary, Forks Over Knives. Now, I was watching that documentary with my husband and I heard Dr. T. Colin Campbell, foremost, world's foremost researcher on animal proteins, right? Um, talking about his 35 year research on it. And he simply said this, which changed my life. We found that eating animal protein turns cancer cells on and not eating animal protein turns cancer cells off. And I thought, that's the secret, that's the ticket for me. So I ran to the fridge. I started throwing out all this stuff. And my husband was like, what are you doing? And I was like, didn't you see that? And he was like, yeah, I saw that. Okay. But he still wasn't, you know, sold on that. Um, and so I just started with the Forks Over Knives cookbook. I just ordered the cookbook and I just started cooking something that sounded like it was going to be good. Uh, and that's how I started. And then I started to learn more about, like, I started to get involved with Florida Voices for Animals because I wanted to do a cooking demo at a veg fest, right? And that's who organizes the veg fest. And I started learning about what happens to the animals in animal agriculture. And I thought to myself, oh, thank God I'm already not participating in that industry anymore, right? Then I started watching documentaries like Cowspiracy and all kinds of environmental things and reading books. And I was thinking, oh my God, thank God I'm not participating in that industry anymore. And, um, and that's when I fully, my heart blew wide open to veganism. And, and this is really who I always wanted to be. Now, that documentary, Forks Over Knives, goes on to explain um, ha how those same animal proteins, those same animal foods are responsible for the epidemics of obesity, type two diabetes and heart disease that we have today. And I thought, how do we not know this? I have to tell people this thing that has helped me. And in the process of that, I had lost like, I don't know, in that one year, maybe 25 pounds. And then since then I've lost 42 and kept it off for all those years, just like you. Um, so, uh, so I thought I have to tell people this thing. I know I'm going to become a coach. That's what I said to myself. And I, so I was consulting Google again. And I was like, is vegan coach a thing? And I came across Main Street Vegan Academy and I read all about it. And I thought to myself, this is the thing I have to do. And so I went and did it. My husband was like, you should do that. So I went and I did it. I went to New York and I learned more and more and more about all the industries and how they exploit animals and how we can turn this around. And it was such a meeting of like-minded people and love and thought that I, it just blew my, my heart and my mind now was just wide open. And when I came home, my husband knew, he knew that I was just going to be dead serious about this. Like, and he was like, I think I'm just going to, I'm going to start eating what you're eating. <laughs> That's what he said. And funny thing that happened while I was away, he got blood test results from a doctor before he made that decision and his cholesterol was high. And he also is a healthy guy, not never been overweight, that kind of thing. We thought we were living a healthy life before all this. And uh, so uh, he, he remembered everything he learned in all those documentaries. And he just said, I think I'm going to start eating what you're eating. And then he came to the Veg Fest 
He met the organizing committee, all the people, all the stuff. And then he is the most diehard vegan there is. And he's the one who makes the vegan pesto. And he's the one who makes the muffins for the retreat center. He's the one who does all that. So if you're lucky, you'll get a, a little um, uh, showing of, of him today. And that's vegan Dave. <laughs> nice, nice. So, I- that's how that's how that all happened. Main Street Vegan Academy just blew it wide open. That is fantastic. What was your favorite course when you took the academy? When I took the academy, my favorite course was um, well, okay, the Vegan Mo's. They talked all about. I loved the course. The, I loved the course that they gave all about. Um, how to show up as a vegan in your life. Like most people, when they first go vegan and it's so important to them, they try to like tell everybody and convert everybody, um, you know, and, and people hate those kind of preachy vegans, right? So that was really fun. And their story was so fun. And I think that they are almost at every single uh, vegan academy. And also John Joseph McGowan, hearing his story from drug addiction into who he is today as an ultra marathon runner. He is amazing. And his story is amazing. Um, and, uh, what was, oh, and we had Dr. Michelle McMacken, and this was the first time I had really like drilled down on all of the studies. She went through all the studies. It was so, so good. That's all I'm saying. I think Victoria has a uh, different guests on and different, um, different doctors, different physicians, different everything. And also we went to different vegan restaurants and my favorite one was Ayurveda Cafe and it just closed. It just closed, but um, so, so good. The, how well-rounded it was. Every single experience was like something new. It was like candy, like a candy bowl for your mind. So where are you with your cancer? Do, is it gone? Are you in remission? What uh, Do you even see doctors anymore or have to get scans? Yeah, I don't see any doctors or get any scans anymore. Um, I don't take those pills. I never did take them after that. Um, I did continue to see the doctor for a couple of years after that to check my tumor markers. And they are always perfect. And my blood chemistry is completely perfection. And so... I don't worry about it anymore. The biggest thing is not whether it comes back or not. It's, it's whether or not you're afraid of it the whole time. Does that make sense? Like if you have to live your life being terrified that cancer's coming back, well, then you can't live. And that's what I was afraid of seven years ago in the very beginning. And this lifestyle, because of how well I feel and because of how sharp my mind is now and because of how strong I'm able to be, and because I can wear little dresses and be thin and fit, it's so fun. And I feel so good that I'm not worried about it. I'm not that woman that is susceptible to that anymore. So that's the status. I mean, Tumor mark, no evidence of disease. 38 radiation treatments. Is that standard? That's a lot, isn't it? 30, 37, yeah. 37. Yeah, that's standard. It goes 35 to 37. You have to go every day for just over a month. It's truly horrifying. It must have been really difficult going through that. I I actually hated it. But I was terrified at the time. And honestly, I would never tell a woman with a big old tumor like I had not to go through the surgeries and not to have chemo or radiation. That is not my message. My message is to do both. Do what the doctors recommend to remove a growing invasive tumor. Um... And, and do what else you can do in your life, in your lifestyle to help yourself. That's my message. Because I, I truly believe that by removing the tumor, the invasive ductal carcinoma that I had growing in my left breast, that that, that actually saved my life. Yeah, that's fantastic. Must but been- going vegan saved my soul. I love that. That's a great tagline. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I feel about it. Yeah. But you know, you, it sounds like your diet wasn't really horrible even before the diagnosis. I mean, it wasn't as pristine as it is now, but it it doesn't sound like you were eating like a lot of junk food or. The the actual animal food is junk food. It's junk. 
That's true. I used to eat like turkey bacon and turkey burgers. And I used to eat a lot of eggs and I used to eat a lot of cheese. Um, and we ate a lot of organic chicken. I just didn't know any better. I just didn't know any better. And I didn't, hadn't eaten meat like red meat in 20 years or so. Um, but I never made the connection with the animals until I started working with Florida Voices for Animals and at the Veg Fest. And until I started going to sanctuaries and bearing witness at slaughterhouses and that kind of thing, I didn't make the connection until all of that. And I'm so glad I did. A lot of people don't want to know about that, unfortunately. Well, I feel that, and I have to tell you, it's hard to watch it, but I actually do watch it. Every day on Instagram, I watch Joey Carbstrong and uh, Earthling Ed and their videos, and <laughs> I watch what they do, and I learn every bit of fresh hell that happens to animals every day because I want to remember what I'm fighting for, and I don't ever want to stop talking about it because the minute you stop talking about it, that's when nobody's listening. Yeah, well, thank you for the work you're doing. I would imagine it would be great if women in your situation found you, and hopefully they do. Well, um, I have been running an amazing Plant Power Woman weight loss and health transformation program, and a big uh, portion or slice of that is connecting your health journey to the greater good and learning what it means to be vegan and learning how to become that woman in those ways. Because most women that I'm speaking to on the calls that I have with them, they want to be a role model in their lives. They want to show their families health. They just don't know how. And when you can connect your health journey to something greater, um, there's less of a chance that you're going to slip back into your you know, regular ways. You're not going to slip back into eating those animals because it becomes who you are. Yeah, that's the, that's what I think. I that's my, there, there is sometimes a little bit of a connection between excess weight, isn't there, with, with certain cancers? Yes. Um, obesity drives estrogen production. And in that way, it drives cancer uh, cell tumor growth. And it's very important for women to not be obese or overweight at all. It's very important. I, I never shut up about that. People will say, oh, I, I just want to be healthy. I don't care about my weight. And I'm like, your weight is, is what drives your health. You know, if you have all that excess weight, you're driving tumor cell growth, insulin resistance, blocked arteries. It all comes from the weight and the fat. You got to get it off. Got to get it off if you want to feel good and have a future and be healthy. Yeah, well, you are very passionate about your work. I appreciate that. I really am. <laughs> It comes through. It really does come through. That's good. So should we get cooking? Absolutely. I just had one more question though, because I'm just curious because, you know, I, I've had Dr. Christy Funk on the show a few times. Are there any foods that either you eat or you ate that are more favorable for recovering from cancer or breast cancer that you, you would like to include preventatively or just. Here's what I'm going to say about that. I'm going to take a quote from, uh, and who said that? I think it's Dr. T. Colin Campbell. He explains this in depth, that it's, it's about the synergy of all the food. Not one specific blueberry is going to cure your cancer or one specific kind of seaweed thing. No, it's all the food. It's a 100% whole food plant-based way of eating that is going to give you the best protection and the best immunity and build your immunity as best that it can be. Does that make sense? That's my answer. Absolutely. Uh, Sue says, are there many vegan restaurants or markets in Belize? Aha. Well, the interesting thing is there are not uh, a solely vegan restaurant, but every single restaurant has vegan options and many of them have a vegan menu. Even the pizzeria here has an entire side of a vegan menu. It's the greatest thing ever. That is yep. very cool. Very cool. I, I, I want to see your recipe. Don't get me wrong, but I'd love to know a little bit about the retreat. I, we have the link in the show notes, but it, it, how often do you run them? So we are working on running them monthly right now. We have, um, I just did one in March. Um, uh, we are having one in September and one in October. And what I'm doing is I'm working with different practitioners to hold different themed types of retreats, although they're all built around vegan cooking and adventure retreats. So for example, the one that I'm having in September is um, a self-sabotage 
uh, free your, uh, free your, <laughs> free your inner child and nourish the real you. So she's an inner child healer. And so we're going to be doing inner child hearing, healings, group healings, fire releasing ceremonies. We're going to have a re-birthday party with a vegan chocolate cake that I'm going to make, of course. Um, and we are going to, uh, she's going to do one-on-one -on -one sessions. And so it's going to be centered around this whole, uh, you know, thought of healing your inner child so that you can move forward in your life powerfully without the self-sabotage. So that's an example of working with a practitioner to create a themed retreat. That's and so, and then, and then in October, I'm doing a taste of it all, which means um, it's not focused on weight loss. It's not going to be a specifically, so I do do some weight loss retreats and this, in that case, it's very low fat. Um, but in the case of taste of it all, I'm going to be having, you know, co showing that you're going to be making coconut milk and real coconuts. We're going to do the Mayan chocolate making tour. So it's not going to be focused on weight loss. Still going to be whole food, plant-based, no oil, but uh, it's going to allow a little bit more fat and have a little bit more of a wider uh, guest type. Do you know what I mean? So each one is completely different. And I want to do, and I want to do a Friendsgiving one in uh, November. That sounds. I want to do that. I don't know how well that goes over. I don't know how many people in the universe don't have family over Thanksgiving, but oh my God, how fun would it be to make seitan and Brussels sprouts and gravy together and a roasted cauliflower pilaf thing? Like, wouldn't that be amazeballs? Yeah. Do people stay actually with you, like in your house when they come? So we built this beautiful retreat center. This is the group cooking kitchen and this is upstairs and then down. And then we have a beautiful veranda that looks out on the second floor. That's where we are now. Downstairs is four guest rooms that sleep two each in either king beds or single beds. So we can fit up to eight guests. Nice. Yeah. Wonderful. And we are 202 steps from the water's edge. Can't beat that. Can't beat it. Can't beat it. It's absolutely fabulous. Love it. So yeah. to I, I love the title of your dish. Totally slurpable. <laughs> totally slurpable. That's, that's the thing. Um, and I, what the, so the three ways thing, what I was just sort of talking about, you can make this dressing three ways. You can make it completely fat free, right? You can make it and it's still totally slurpable no matter which way you choose. And that's why I wanted to show this completely fat free. Um, you can make it completely nut free, which would be using tahini. And then you can make a peanut sauce using peanut butter. So I'm going to show you the fat free and the peanut butter way. And uh, so that's what I mean by making it three ways. And that's what I mean by being able to choose, you know, how you want to live your plant based lifestyle, depending on, you know, if I eat a little bit of peanut butter, it doesn't do anything, nothing happens. It's fine. You know, some women can't eat any peanut butter. It would be a trigger. Some women who know they're food addicts, they can't go on a Mayan chocolate tour. They know it's going to be a trigger and I don't want to provide a trigger. You know what I mean? So, um, so trying to specify the different retreats for different, uh, group, different kinds of groups. But the most exciting part really is, um, working with different practitioners so that they bring their, um, students and followings. And so we work together on it and then we can create all these different things. And so that inner child thing, that's going to be just like, boom. Cool. Hey, um, Kathy wants to know how you found your place in Belize. Well, uh, <laughs> basically you search all of the websites. There's not an MLS here, like there is in the United States. So you just find the, the Belize you know, the Belize Placencia website and you just search the websites. I, we, what we chose to do was work with a buyer's agent so that, you know, she would constantly show us things and so that we could find them. But it's the same way in the US, there's just not an MLS where you could just search all the listings. You have to go to a lot of different places to do it on the internet. Very but, nice. but, but here's the other answer to your question. The reason we chose Belize is because it is a British Commonwealth, which means it has the same 
title laws that we have like in the United States that they have in Great Britain. So as a foreigner, you can own title here and have title insurance. And that was very important to us to, to buy property. I didn't want to go to Costa Rica where men with guns could come and take my property away. So, uh, and the other thing about Belize is that they speak English here. Everybody speaks English and the money is super simple. So um, all of those things make this just a pleasure to have, to run retreats here and a pleasure to visit. Makes it easy peasy. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. Any other questions? Who's asking questions? Well, I know a lot of people are, but I think for now, that is, uh, well, Karen says, where in Belize are you specifically? Ah, Placencia, the Placencia Peninsula. Nice. So that's the south, the southeast portion of Belize out into the water. Great. Yeah. All right. Should we get cooking? Get cooking or uncooking. <laughs> get cooking. Okay. So um, I'm gonna start with the sauce because I wanna show you these three ways and then we'll chop up all our veggies and we'll put it all together and that's it. It's super easy. So I'm gonna be using my little Ninja here. I love my Ninja prep set. I have all three sizes of this thing. It's my favorite thing of all time, okay? You could also use an immersion blender if you want to and you could also use a whisk, especially if you're not using peanut butter. If you're using peanut butter, you really want to whoosh it up a little bit because it's very thick, okay? So, um, so here we have two cloves of garlic. Now, if I know I'm making peanut sauce and I'm going to whoosh it, you don't have to do this step. But if you're doing the fat-free version, you're going to want to use something like this to grate your garlic very fine. And this way, the sauce will be very finely uh, flavored. You won't have those big minced chunks of garlic. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I'm gonna show you what that looks like because it really makes a difference in your sauces, see that? See how finely chopped up that is and see how quick it happened? So we're gonna do the same thing, that was two cloves of garlic. We're gonna do the very same thing with the ginger, okay? So I keep my ginger in the freezer all the time so that I always have fresh ginger. And I use a spoon to peel it. You see how finely peeled that is? You use a spoon to peel it, not a peeler and not a knife, and it just comes right off. It's the greatest thing ever. I don't know why that is, but you're gonna use this same uh, tool. Um, this is like a cheese grater, but I ain't never going to grate cheese on it. So, so we're going to do the same thing. So an inch of ginger is literally like an inch, like you figure, you know, an inch. And ginger's kind of spicy, so it's up to you how much you like. So again, see how finely grated that is. And we're going to put that right into, uh, I'm going to put it right in here. I'm going to start it this way so that you can see what the fat-free version looks like. And then we're going to do one third of a cup of uh, soy sauce or tamari. One third of a cup. That's that. Have you always enjoyed cooking? I always love to cook, but now I love to cook so much that it's ridiculous. And I actually teach women in my groups and programs that cooking is a super powerful form of self-care because that's really what I believe it is when you're healing yourself from any kind of chronic illness. Okay, so let me concentrate on what I'm doing. One tablespoon of maple syrup. And you know what? If you don't want to have the maple syrup, you can leave it out. And here is fresh lime juice that I squeezed with limes right on this neat little squeezer thing. I just went like this and squeezed all these limes, or rather Dave did it for me. And we're gonna use a quarter cup of that. And if you like it hot, shoot it with the sriracha. Do you like it hot, Chef AJ? I like it hot, but hubby doesn't like it hot. So we compromise and do everything medium. 
Medium, yeah. And then you just put this on the end of the table and you do what you want to do with it. So, uh, so I'm going to just show you that this is, this is the sauce. <laughs> this is the sauce, totally slurpable if you do not want to have the fat. Okay, this is the whole sauce. Mm, it is so good. It is so, so good. You don't even need the fat. Woo! That's hot. Wow. So, um, question from Babette. Is there a difference between a garlic press and a garlic grater? Um, yeah. This is a cheese grater, as I said before, but it's great for grating garlic and ginger. And uh, a garlic press takes a piece of garlic and presses it out. So you don't get this finely grated effect that you get from this, okay? This really makes it so that you don't get chunks, big chunks, okay? Um, so now, to make it into a peanut sauce, we're simply gonna add that third cup of nut butter, okay? And they have the best peanut butter in Belize, the best oil-free, sugar-free, Salt-free peanut butter, I can't even believe it because they don't have a, lo a lot of, you know, that kind of stuff, but this is so good and creamy. So a third cup of that goes right in the machine. And we're gonna whoosh that all up and you're just gonna see the magic. Did you do any uh, cooking in Main Street Vegan Academy or learning any cooking? Yes, we did. And we also did baking with, uh, we, we had the cake baker Fran. It was fabulous. And that is all you have to do. That is it. Okay, that is all you have to do. So now, if I were serving people who were coming over, I would simply pour that in a gravy boat. Now look how fancy we are all of a sudden. Look at that, you guys. And there we have a nice little ladle and we're all ready with our sauce, okay? Put that aside. So that's how we do the sauces. So that you can have it fat free, or you can have it creamy, or you can have it however you like it. Now, when you're serving lots of um, different kinds of eaters, I recommend the creamy version because it is so slurpable, it's ridiculous how much people love it. I have a friend, a dear friend who said, uh, she, would, she would drink my peanut, my ginger goddess peanut sauce out of a dirty sneaker, that's how good it was. <laughs> I no, drink out of it. I, I prefer it in a clean sneaker, if you don't mind. Uh, hey, man, that, she said it, not me. She said it, not me. All right. So now let's get our, our bar ready. So here I have some whole wheat pasta, right? Now, when I stand around cooking, I cook a whole batch, okay? I don't just cook a little bit because I want to have some leftover for later in the week if I want to make a stir fry or if I want to have some of my lentil quinoa bolognese that's in the freezer, right? So here is our beautiful pasta. We're going to put this in a bowl. And I'm going to set this up on the buffet over here. This is how we serve it here at the at Vegan Villa Kula Retreat Center. Okay? So what else do we have? So there's a big list of all of these veggies. Now you don't have to have all of these veggies. You could just have some of these veggies, but if you wanna have zoodles, then you gotta have at least zucchini. We're gonna do the zoodles last. We're not gonna do them yet. We're gonna do everything else first. And the reason why is because zucchini can exude its own liquids. And so we don't want to give it any kind of chance to get salad. So you always just do those right before you're going to eat. So let's do a big bowl of greens and cabbages. So we have some crunch and some greens in our, in our dish. Okay. So here in Belize, I would say this is spinach, but here in Belize, I don't like the spinach. It's tough. It's weird. So they have this beautiful thing called callaloo, and it's just like spinach. 
So I'm gonna take it just like this, and I'm gonna chop it in one inch ribbons. And this same thing that I'm showing you right now, take note, because this is how you chop up a whole bowl of salad greens so that it lasts good in the refrigerator for more than two or three days in a way so that it does not get soggy. So I cut it into one inch ribbons and I'm gonna turn it again. And I'm gonna cut it again across so that I'm, I'm roughly chopping it. And then I'm gonna go across it again. A couple more questions came in, one from Joe. Are you close to magnificent teakle runes? No. I've yeah. never heard of it. Magnificent who? What? Looks like T-I-K-A-L or T-I, get my glasses. T-I-K-A-L. Oh, yeah. we are close to uh, Lubantan Mayan ruins. Not the T-I-K-A-L, no. That's in the northern part. That's more northern. So you see how we chop this up? Now, if you have some salad greens of some kind, which I also do have, you just take a fist and you do the same exact thing. One inch ribbons, very fast, turn the board, go again. And there you have it. So now I'm gonna put these in a bowl and we're gonna add to this bowl. Watch this. Okay, so, so far, this is what we have in our bowl. This is the base, this is the bottom, okay? Next, we're gonna do some cabbages. Now, in the US, you can just buy the bagged cabbage shred and dump it right in the bowl with the greens, but I can't buy that here. So I have my head of cabbage, so I'm gonna use this device. This is my Xylus slicer, and I'm just gonna slice it up really super quick. There we go. Cut it like that. And I also have a purple cabbage. So let's have some purple cabbage too. There was a question, which, which uh, blender did you use? I used my Ninja Master Prep Set. It has a small, a medium, and a large um, cup to it or decanter to it, and I absolutely love it. We use it every day at the retreats. So see that? See how quick and easy we did that? So then you're gonna add that to your greens. And then you're gonna just like go like this, right? You see how beautiful this is looking? And dry, not soggy. So next, let's do some carrots. For the carrots, I like the shredder, just because. So we're just gonna shred some carrots. And if you notice, this is like a good workout for the arms. Now, if you like it crunchier, you can you know, use this for the carrots. It's, it's up to you, I like the shredder. And you're gonna do about a cup of each of these vegetables to serve two people. So you will double the recipe for every two people. Does that make sense? Makes sense. It's such beautiful. I love the color of having the, the cabbage and the carrot together. Yeah, watch this. This is what she's talking about. So we're going to mix that all up. Isn't that lovely? It is. It really is. Okay. So now, if you were to keep this in your refrigerator, this would be just like this for two or three days that you could make your own salads as a base and not have to go chopping. So this is how I teach it. This is, this is my method. So here's, that's, that's that, okay? So we're gonna put that over there. Now, what else? How about some cucumbers? You like cucumbers? I do. And yeah. question from Kathy, do you have an Amazon store that shows all the appliances you're using? Yes, I do, I do. Um, I can give you the link to that somehow. You give it to me, I can add it to the show notes after the show. Okay, I can definitely do that. All right, so now here's the thing. If we added this, this cucumber to our, um, our 
salad mix, it would get soggy, right? So we don't, we serve it separately, right? We serve it separately, so that goes there. How about some red pepper? Same thing. I look at what I'm doing. I don't want to run my fingers through this. You guys, if you order this thing, you should get it with the glove. I always recommend the glove. Okay. But look how nicely this, this is slicing up, right? See that? So we'll put that. Now these are also very wet. If you look at it, it smells so good. Mm. These are also very wet. If you put this in your salad, you'll be making your salad soggy. Okay, so there we go, we have that. Who likes scallions? I love scallions, especially the green part. Me too, me too. So I cut off most of this white part and I save it for my green goddess Slurpee soup, which is started with these bottoms. They smell so good. All right, so we're gonna cut up a bunch of these now. For anybody who's new to cooking, I know a lot of my clients are brand new to cooking. We peel off the outer yucky um, pieces of the stalks so that all you're left with are these very nice pieces, okay? We cut off the bottoms always. You can regrow them, put them in soup like I do. You can save them in the freezer, in a broth bag if you want to do that. I do all of those things. All of the above. And I really like scallions, so that's why I'm cutting a lot. Especially the green parts, like AJ said, right? I, I love them. And you know, I learned uh, the other day from a registered dietitian specializing in GI health that even people on low FODMAP that can't have garlic and onion can have the green part of the scallion. Oh, thank you for telling me that. I did not know that. Yes. But not the white part, it's onion, it's the onion. Right, not the oniony part, but the green part. And that does add a lot of flavor to food. Ooh. Oh my God, it smells so good. You guys, my kitchen is smelling amazing right now. Okay, now not everybody likes onions depending on where they are, you know, not everybody likes so many onions, right? So again, that's why we're putting them in a separate bowl. And also they would make your, sal your salad, your greens soggy. So that's why we have these in a separate bowl. Now, how about cilantro? Like cilantro, are you yes cilantro or no cilantro tastes like soap? Which one? Me, I'm yes, but I, I just interviewed John Robbins and he's the soap taster. So yeah, so I love cilantro, but at my retreats, we always serve it separately because we never know who's going to be a soap eater. So we never want that to happen. So I'm going to chop this very finely. I'm going to save the rest of this for later. And I'm going to put that in a separate bowl. This way, the soap eaters will not have that feeling, right? Okay. What I want to know is how do they know what soap tastes like in the first place? I think everybody knows what soap tastes like. <laughs> I don't know. I guess, I guess it's just like some kind of feeling that they have. Good point. Good point. Now, how about some peas or some edamame, right? I have peas today. So I love peas. So all you have to do is defrost them. You don't have to do anything else. Like that. How about jalapenos? Who likes it hot? Do you, AJ, do you like jalapenos? I do. I really like jalapenos and I don't find them terribly hot unless you use the seeds. They're hot to me. So I'm going to slice them really small. just a very little bit. I also happen to burn my, burn my face and my lips and my eyes with them. I'm very silly about jalapenos, but I love them. So 
you know, I don't know how to get around it. I guess if I wore gloves and never touched my face, right? I don't know. So we have this, uh, this pretty shell thing that we serve the jalapenos in. This is fun. Somebody made us this little thing. Isn't that cute? Okay. We'll put the jalapenos in there. All right. Okay, so who wants to zoodle? Me. Which which, uh, which zoodle machine do you use? All right, let me get all this out of the way. I'll show you my zoodler. Okay, here we go. So I use this one. Come on, it's stuck. I use this one. This is the OXO one. It's very good and grippy, that's why I like it. So let me see how everybody can see me here. If I do it like this, is that a good angle? You put the thing down so it sticks, you check, and then it's a good idea to put um, a cutting board underneath it, like that. And here we go. So you take your zucchini, you cut off both sides, nice and flat, as flat as you can. Now zucchinis are, notoriously not even on both sides, like mine is fat on one side, but you do the best you can. See, it's not as, you do the best you can. You open this up, you stick one side in here. It's very fun, we do this at the retreat and everybody gets to zoodle. You stick it in like that, and you move that out of the way. And there you have it. You see the zoodles? So I recommend two zucchinis per person. So when we have 10 people, we literally, uh, I mean, two zucchini, one zucchini per person, so two for this recipe. And so we literally do 10 zucchinis. And this is what they come out like now. Look how long those are. I like to cut them just so that so you just go through and cut them like that. We're gonna put them in this beautiful bowl and we're gonna do one more. For anybody who missed that, here we go. So we cut both ends off. And zoodling is fun. That's also why we do it. It's just legitimately fun. Okay, so you just stick that in there. Also, for people that are gluten-free, I always want to offer all of the options, right? So if I serve zoodles and noodles, I can accommodate both. And what I really like to do, I'm not gluten-free, but what I really like to do is have both on my plate. That's my favorite. So that's why it's totally slurpable pad thai zoodles and noodles. All right, and there you have it. And you can save these bottoms. If you have a bottom, you can save those. Take out the middles. And there you have it. Isn't this pretty? Isn't that nice? Gorgeous, and your bowl is too. Yeah, thanks. All right, so we're gonna put that there. We're gonna put that there. What else? This here. Okay. So this is how you set it up. This is how you set it up if you're serving a group of people. You line it all up bar style. Uh, oh, here's one more thing. We have sprouts. Who else likes sprouts? I love sprouts. So, um, Oh. Okay, so you can use any kind of sprouts that you want. You can use any kind of sprouts that you want. I happen to have mung bean sprouts here, which I absolutely love, but I've done this with alfalfa sprouts or any sprouts that you like. Okay, so how, what questions do we have? Before I show you how to plate it up, what questions do we have? Let me see. Da, 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 da. 
I don't know, if, don't know if I'm seeing any questions right now. Well, there's a statement from Kathy, used to hate cilantro, but taste buds have changed and she now likes it. So that's good. Wow. That's, I've never heard of that happening where somebody lost their taste for soapy cilantro. Like if it tastes soapy, I never heard that somebody lost that. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. I'm going to show you how to plate this up. Are you ready? I can't wait. Okay, here we go. Uh, here's my plate. I'm gonna put a nice bunch of zoodles on my plate. And I'm gonna show it to you up close. I'm gonna put some noodles on my plate. I'm gonna put a bunch of these greens on my plate. I'm gonna put sprouts. I'm building like a volcano. See what I'm building here? I'm building a volcano. All right, I'm gonna put cucumber. I'm gonna put some red peppers. I'm gonna put tons of onions because I love onions. I'm gonna put lots of peas because I love peas. And lots of cilantro. And here comes the jalapeno at the very end. All right, bring it in. Okay, so here we go with the peanut sauce. Look how nice and thick that is. And here's how we do it. Are you ready? Here we go, everybody. So it's a nice big plate of food, right? This ain't no diet thing, right? We're not doing tiny plates. Here we go. I got my ladle and you go around and around and around, usually one ladle full is just perfect. And that's how you do it, there it is. Ah, uh, here comes Dave. Like, here comes that, Dave that with is, something. That is so gorgeous. Let's see what Dave's ah, got. Ah, here we go. Ah, we've got the grilled, we've got the grilled pineapple. Oh, so that. Dave. Grilled cayenne pineapple. Look at that. So this is Vegan Dave. Hello everyone, how you doing? I want you to know, keep calm, plants have protein. And this is the brawn behind the whole operation. I do the cleanup. Yeah. That's the way it is. I clean the plates, he cleans I eat the all plate. the food and do all that stuff. So it's he, wonderful. He eats the food and cleans the plates. That's right. So there you have hey, it. Dave, can you come back a second? I'd love to ask you oh, something. Sure. Because yes. um, one of the things I've discovered in working with people is it's often the wife that wants to make a dietary change, not always because they have cancer, but the husband is often resistant. Was, was that your case? And what got you? Yes, on it was. Plan? Yes, it was. it was. It took me about a year and a half in order to get on board um, just because I was stubborn for no reason. Just ego, stubbornness, you know, I, well, I want to do what I want to do kind of stuff. And then. Once you get get into the mindset, then it's fine. Then you just you make the switch. It's one of those things. You just have to get over yourself, basically. Guys, there's just too much ego with guys. Let's put it that way. Too much. Just it's just normal. Well, and also he <laughs> loved meat and potatoes. He was a meat and potatoes guy. Like legit, he didn't eat any vegetables. Like none, none, none of that. None of that would he no. no. Just the way that it was. But you know, when I changed to eating the way that I'm eating now, everything got better physically emotionally everything so it's just one of those things tell them tell them what happened with your allergies so being that for 50 years no i used to get i used to take pills um get shots for my allergies i had um a very debilitating uh, seasonal rhinitis so my allergies were ever all the it time was horrible. It was, the sneezing it was crazy was horrible so if you remember the odd, you remember the, the show, The Odd Couple? Yeah. I love that show. Okay. I was Felix Unger making all those noises. <laughs> all of that oh. stuff. All that stuff. All of it, all the time. It was, it, was never, it was never over. I really never tasted food until I stopped eating milk, cheese, eggs, and meat. And then within 14 days, all of my allergy symptoms went away. Mine, personally, all of it. I could taste food for the first time in 45 years. That was actual, besides just the spices, but the actual food itself. So it was a huge change for me. Um, and it was the best change ever because, you know, I lost 
so much weight. It was ridiculous. It was, you know, I guess, what was it? 24 pounds in 30 days. And, you know, men, we lose weight when we stop drinking soda, like 10 pounds automatic. So it's one of those things where when I stopped drinking sodas every day, carbonated, it was gone. That was gone. Then the rest of it was just um, the cheese and the milk. Just everything from everything just fell off as far as that goes. Then I stayed at one. I stayed at 172 for two years and then I'm down to 164 now, which has been another two years of that. So it's been steadily what it is. It just stays there. So it's not some kind of and I eat more than Naomi eats twice as much half the time of what we're eating. So, you know, it's one of those things with me. It just seemed to work out that way. That's but great. being able to not have the allergies and to feel so much better physically is there's no reason to go back to doing what I was doing. Were you able to influence any of your guy friends to make a dietary change? Um, I just go as, as an example. I don't really tell them what to do, but they see what's going on and they can make their own choices. What about your sister? My sister, Melissa, she has made a choice to go mostly vegan um, and eats very little meat now. And then when we went on vacation for eight days together, she ate just like I ate. We ate all the same stuff. So it was very easy to do. So he showed there her. Was no, there was no, you know, conflict in that. She wanted to do that. She's, she has taken some of the, she's seen some of the lives that Naomi has done and is starting to get on board with that. She's going to come down here for a retreat you know, in a couple of weeks and we do the next one. So it's going to be fun. She wants to join the cooking club that I do. So yeah. So it's going to be good. But you know, you know who went vegan um, around the time Dave went vegan is my brother, John. So oh yeah, that's right. That was super powerful when you can really help somebody in your own family and you really see the effect of it is, you know, and, and, and we're closer than ever because of it, because we both have those same values now. And it's, yes. it's really so powerful when you can see yourself uh, making a difference in other people's lives. That's fantastic. It's so great when, uh, when people are on board, you know, your, your loved ones. Well, I, what I will tell you about marriage and relationships when, about going vegan is that when you are able to do it together, you're able to grow in your relationship in a way that you would not be able to if if you didn't do it together and when you can see each other overcoming your health issues and growing happier and healthier together, there's nothing more powerful than that for a relationship to stick. All right, I got to get the rest of the stuff off the grill. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, uh, people think people love Dave. They love vegan Dave. They say he's a good <laughs> spokesman for the vegan way of vegan. life and they love his t-shirt as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I added sesame seeds to the top of this because you could just keep on adding. All right. Any other questions? No, but just people want the shirt and the food. <laughs> they, have the to come to, they have to come to Belize. <laughs> the shirt is available at Green Culture uh, Restaurant in Trinity, Florida. And I believe that she does sell them online. And if you want to cook with me, you got to come to a retreat in, in Belize and you can find those on my website at goingveganforhealth.com, vegan retreats. There's a tab at the top for vegan retreats. There's a tab at the top for all of my recipes that are available for free. Um, and I would love to cook with you. That is what I live for because a lot of people, vegans, non-vegans, vegan curious, they, they come here and they don't know what they didn't know or why it wasn't working for them or, or whatever. Oh, that's what it that. really looks like. There you have it. Oh, yeah. You're not, you need those lines. These are cayenne dusted pineapple. So they're spicy. They're so good. So um, what was I saying? Oh, they don't know what they don't know until they come here. And they cook with us every day. You get to see breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. You get to see that we, um, we made double of this stuff so that we had a lot left over so that the next day you could shove these in your pita with roasted vegetables and hummus. Like they get to see how we use things. They get to see how I make a double batch of this peanut sauce so that I can then make the stir fry later in the week. And I already have these veggies in a bowl and I already have the pasta cooked, right? I don't just stand here doing a little bit of cooking. I do a lot so that it's all available to me. And when they come here and they see that we're not using oil and we're not using processed foods, what actually happens is most people lose weight on my retreats. So it's pretty amazing. 
Um, and they learn what they didn't know by doing it. So it's very powerful, very powerful. And they get to hang out with Vegan Dave. That sounds like fun. Alyssa says that Dave makes awesome vegan muffins, banana muffins. Yeah, he does. Alyssa says that. Yes, he does. Um, he makes them for the retreat. So that's how we welcome people with vegan banana muffins. And he makes those every single time. That's what he does. Well, that's his, sounds amazing. Do you miss the United States at all? Uh, no. I think the United States is crazy right now. <laughs> um, and I don't miss Walmart and Target. You know, you could say to yourself, oh, I wish I could just go get this or go to the Columbia store or just pick up whatever I want. But um, but you get used to you get used to not having it. And it's really very freeing. It's really very freeing. And I really love the nature aspect here. And I really love being outdoors just so much more than I even was in Florida because we go walking on the beach twice a day. We go swimming all those times. We're hiking in the jungle. We're diving in rainforests. It's just different. It's just more. Sounds amazing. Uh, Florence wants to know if you're coming to Florida for the Veg Fest in Tampa in November. You know, I would love to do that. Is that my Florence for my Florence, who I know, who's been to my retreats? Florence Marsh. Um, M A R S. Yes, Florence Marsan. You know, Florence, I maybe should come to Veg Fest. I don't know. Let, I'm going to see about that. I don't know if they'll let me do a cooking demo because I did one, but it, but it was before the pandemic, so maybe they would. I don't know. They don't usually like to repeat uh, repeat chefs, so I don't know. That's a good point, Florence. I will take that up with Vegan Dave and find out. Uh, Amy says. Uh, she loves that you don't miss the U.S. You seem quite content, like you're on a permanent vacation. Well, I work hard, though. <laughs> I do. I do a lot of work, but um, we we are on permanent vacation. Like we do say that to each other. We're like, you know, we're sitting here walking the dog where other people go for vacation. This is we're so grateful for that. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Whose idea was it to move and Belize? Um, whose Hers. idea was it? It was Naomi's idea. It was my idea to move to Belize, but it just started like as like a spark of an idea. But Dave is the brains behind the retreats. It was his idea to like do retreats in the beginning because all I was doing was coaching my coaching programs. He was the one who was like, you know, I, I think we were having a talk about like, you know, what would you really want to do in your life? Like, what do you want to do? And he was like, well, I want to travel. And I said something really mean to him, like, oh, that's so dumb. Everyone wants to travel. But then he was like, you know, we could take people to places and show them how to cook. And I could, you know, do all the trips and guide them on the trails. And I was like, yeah, you could. And, and then we, we did it. We did it small in Florida first. That's where Florence came. We did uh, some small ones in Florida over the weekend, over weekends. And that's how we started doing the week long retreats all over the U.S., and so that's how we knew, that's how we knew we could do it here. Absolutely fabulous. How long are the retreats, Nene asks? So um, generally they are seven days and six nights. And the only time that's different is if I'm working with a practitioner and she wants or he wants a longer or shorter retreat. Or if you are um, a solo traveler and you want to come here and learn from me one on one, you can have a seven, 10, 20 day retreat, you know, depending on, you know, what you want to learn. If you want a full immersion and you want to come here and learn this, like as if you were going to the McDougal Center or something like that, you can come and do that here with me. So um, and, and, and you get the cooking aspect that you don't get every place else. So you really learn by doing that's, what's different over here. Well, it sounds fabulous. I love what you've created for people that want to create their own dreams. Do you recommend main street vegan Academy? Do you think that would help them? Oh my gosh. If you have a dream of learning everything there is to know about why veganism is important now, um, then I recommend the Main Street Vegan Academy. If you want to become a vegan coach, I recommend the Main Street Vegan Academy. If you want to be around like-minded people for the first time in your life who are thinking these things and thinking in a solutionary way, 
I recommend the Main Street Vegan Academy. And I recommend being next to Victoria Moran as much as you possibly can. Thanks so much. This was just a wonderful presentation. It was great to meet you, Dave. You should come on sometime and make banana muffins. Ah. Oh, that would be wonderful. I'm gonna I'm gonna email Naomi. That let's let's book Vegan Dave. I, I love the name. It's a, it's a great name. <laughs> <laughs> he wears Thanks. the necklace. <laughs> I think it's great. Thank you so much. It was, it was just wonderful seeing you again. Congratulations. Thank you. Kisses and love to everybody. Take care. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow as we finish up the week devoted to the graduates of Main Street Vegan Academy with another wonderful culinary demo from Cindy Thompson from Try Amazing. She's going to be making many things, including a sweet potato. I hope I pronounce it right. Bon Me. Now, guys, can you get sweet potatoes where you live? Oh, yeah. We They have the regular... Um... They have the regular orange ones, they have the white ones, and they also have Belize ones. They have lots of different kinds. Nice. Well, what are the Belize ones? What color are those? Uh, they are purple on the outside and white on the inside. Oh, those are my favorite. Those are like the Japanese, I think. Those are delicious. Yeah, that's what they're like, but they're a little stringy. I don't think yours are stringy. Yeah, I don't think mine are stringy. Well, yeah, maybe, these are maybe. stringy. They're well, very wild. <laughs> <laughs> As they have. Like you guys, very wild. That's <laughs> yes, it. Yes. Absolutely. Well, take care. So nice to see you. <laughs>